Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, the reason why our society lacks unity and lies broken and in heaps is because man has lost connection with himself or herself. This is a transcendental universal principle. To actually connect to that essence of who we really are. If a person has chronic boils, boils are extremely painful and you have to let them go through their natural course. I've had many in my life. We have to treat the symptoms. We put salve on it. We treat that boil in a particular way. But if the cause of the boils is a disease in the blood, unless we treat that, then there will just be continuous. We treat one, we make it better, and another comes. Some years ago, I was sitting in the New Delhi airport. I had just taken a pilgrimage of several thousand people for about two weeks in a place called Brindavan, and I was really tired. And I was waiting for a flight to get back to where I live in Mumbai, and I was really happy to kind of just be alone waiting for the flight. And then somebody came up to me and said, the union minister of the government of India for the environment wants to speak to you. So I said, OK. <laughs> and she came up. And she challenged me. She said, what are you swamis and yogis doing for the environment? The rivers are polluted. The oceans are polluted. The ground is polluted. The air is polluted. And you're just sitting around chanting your mantras and meditating and doing your pujas, your rituals. What are you doing? We need action. So that was a challenge. It's kind of like a storm. It's like an earthquake, actually. <laughs> Very powerful lady. Um, and she stared at me, waiting for an answer. Because she really cared. She really cared about the environment. And I remember responding by using the same example. When we're covered with boils, we do have to treat the symptomatic problem. But if the cause is a disease in the blood, we have to treat that. What is the cause for all this crime and all this hatred and hypocrisy in the name of religion? What is the problem with the greed on Wall Street that's actually creating such a destabilization in our own economy? What is the problem in India among politicians who, for, for bribes, are willing to compromise and let the people suffer? And what is actually the reason why there's all this pollution? It's a pollution within the human heart. When our heart is polluted, we're going to, through our words and through our actions and through the decisions we make, we're going to pollute the world. Because what's in is expressed through what we do and say. We have to address, we have to educate people how to live in harmony with ourselves, how to live in harmony with each other, how to live in harmony with God, and how to live in harmony with nature. And today's world now, it has come to a point 
with all of our incredible science and our incredible technology and the, the unbelievable development of industry and the armies and the weapons and the bombs and the incredible power of communication. If we don't use these things with the right attitude, with the right motives, we have the power to really cause serious destruction. The purpose of religion, the purpose of spirituality, the purpose of yoga is very simple. It's not a sectarian idea. It's to clean the pollution in our hearts. Transformation. Transformation of arrogance into humility. Transformation of greed, toxic greed that can never be satisfied. Being a millionaire, being a billionaire cannot satisfy the heart. That's the way greed is. It's like a fire. The more you feed it, the hotter it burns. And selfishness. Transforming selfishness into a desire to selflessly or unselfishly serve others. Hate into love. Envy into being, into rejoicing over somebody else's good fortune. And actually connecting, connecting to a grace, an energy that is within all of us and everything that brings out that love that is within us. So I told this lady that we're trying to do our part. <laughs> and you're doing your part. And we should work together. Because if we, if we don't clean up the internal state of human consciousness, even if you clean every river, every ocean, all the air and all the ground, as long as that selfish, egoistic greed is there, they're just going to pollute it all over again. And she smiled and said, yes, we must work together. This is the potential of those interlocking roots of the redwood forest. <laughs> we all have our differences. Some of us are accountants. Some of us are software engineers. Some of us are managers. Some of us are politicians, farmers. Scientists, technologists. In a human body, every part of the body has a unique function. But they're not fighting with each other. It's not that the brain says to the kidneys, I'm better than you. You do what I say. And it's not the liver tells the heart that you can't do what I can do. And the heart doesn't tell the eyes, you are low class. <laughs> Every part of the body has its own color, its own shape, its own function, but they all work together for the sake of the whole body. And only when that's there is there health. When we can see beneath the external superficial differences that we all have with each other, and we actually understand the essence of who we really are beneath as divine, eternal, all-loving beings, then we can recognize how we're all connected and how every one of us, we could respect each other for what we contribute, like the parts of the body. I may not be able to do what you can do, 
you could probably do what I do. <laughs> Just recently, I spoke at the HSBC Bank headquarters in London, and there was 900 bankers. And I was supposed to speak to them. That was the event. And I was, I actually looked out at them and started laughing. <laughs> Even now I'm laughing, just thinking about it. And I had to just be honest. I said, I don't know why you asked me to speak to you. <laughs> you're one of the greatest banks in the whole world, and you're among the greatest bankers in the whole world. There were all these department heads and CEOs and everything there. And I said, and you're asking me to speak to you? I have not had a bank account, and have not signed a check since 1969. They looked at me <laughs> like I was an alien <laughs> from a distant universe. Like, how do you survive? Now, I can't say to all of you that I have never looked at Google, because everyone has to look at Google. <laughs> Even people without bank accounts are <laughs> But you see, whatever our strengths and weaknesses may be, cultured humanity is when we honor and respect what a person can contribute. Instead of judging people according to what I have and what you don't have, what I can do and what you can't do, where I'm from and where you're not from, what religion I'm from and what you're not from. Real love manifests as compassion. Real love manifests as having compassion with equal vision. Of course we have to discriminate, but not in an egoistic way. It's not that you go up to a tiger and embrace it because we are one. That's foolishness. Well, for most of us, it would be. <laughs> we keep a distance. I was speaking last night. I lived in the Himalayan jungles with one yogi, and he taught me that the leopards and the snakes and the panthers, they're all around you. You're sleeping under trees in the jungle. And whether you're awake or asleep, they have greater power than you. If you feel that you are better than them, or if you have any fear of them, they will kill you. But if you see the sacredness of life and honor and respect that, don't go and start petting the cobras. Give them their space, and they'll give you your space. And believe it or not, it really works. But you know what I found? That it's much more difficult to do that with humans. Because <laughs> humans have really complicated egos. <laughs> Animals are predictable. <laughs> but that is our potential. And that is how we could actually make a real difference within this world, in whatever we're doing. 